question in the chat from our uh, very uh, constant viewer, memes of distraction, about um, anyone else find it humorous that our reality is modeled quite well with the imaginary unit? Um, so I will begin. I will begin by that. So, so this idea that the imaginary unit is somehow uh, not very real, or like, is it, isn't it funny that imaginary is real and things like that? It's to be honest, it's purely uh, a, a consequence of the lexicon used. It's like because, because you call it imaginary, yeah. and suddenly it starts to sound funny. Um, because complex numbers, all that complex numbers are. It's just rotation, right? It's just 2D rotation. It's just a, it's, it's just a, an algebraic encoding of, of rotation and some other aspects, of course. I mean, there's not just rotation, but but it, it is effectively um, rotation. So, you know, the, the imaginary unit is um, the algebraic expression of, you know, rotate something 90 degrees and, and, and do this, this basic geometric operations. So when you look at it from, from a, from a geometric point of view, there, there's really no mystery that the complex numbers are extremely natural to describe to describe reality. When you go through, through the narrative, the more number theoretic narrative of uh, field extensions and things like that, then it does su seem a bit more surprising. And I'm not trying to discount the surprise that mathematical constants show up in unexpected places, because it is a surprise. I mean, the, I mean pi shows up everywhere and all these kinds of things. I mean, th these are non-trivial facts. I'm not trying to, to dismiss that kind of thing, but particularly the imaginary unit, which is just a unit. I mean, it's not a mathematical constant that is super transcendental and, and, deep to, and, deep, and, to, and difficult to understand. Um, I find it a, a little bit, you know, um, it has a lot of history and a, a lot of baggage, but, uh, you know, it, it's not really that, um, that uh, deep uh, to, to find that I imaginary unit is, is so useful. Now, that being said, um, algebra, so I represents, from the algebraic point of view, represents solutions to equations that make no sense in some context, right? So those the negative are- Negative area, for example. Sorry, say it again? So to me, it represents something like the concept of a negative area. And in quaternions, it's sort of extended to the higher dimension. The IJK representing some sort of negative area cube or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So, in, in a way, when when you take it's like if you really want to take negative num numbers seriously, you you actually can have the same you can have the same critique about negative numbers because you say, well, I mean, I can only count positive amount. Like, how can I ever count a negative amount? That doesn't make any sense, right? You, you can't go negative if you keep on going, right? It's not like you, you, you loop the circle and suddenly you're in the negatives by, by counting more, right? So, so you can, I mean, the, the abstraction of i is very similar to the abstraction of minus one. And, and so, again, if you take the algebraic approach, it's not so deep in that way, but you do, you, by i, you do encounter the first instance of an algebra that has some properties that are extremely formally natural and, and very desirable, and it was by no means obvious to begin with. Right? Like nobody started by doing complex analysis in you know in Mesopotamia or something. Right? Like I mean, they they, they started doing arithmetic, they started doing some rational um, calculus and things like that, but but they didn't uh, immediately jump to say, oh well, yeah, yeah, let's consider this extension and just formal formal solutions and run with it. That took centuries to develop. So. Um, there is this notion that complex numbers have a, an algebraic prevalence, some kind of importance within uh, all the possibilities of algebras that you can define. And this is where I can take the, the second half of the answer um, uh, that, that was posted more for, for the Galois groups and the Langlands program thing, but is that with the ability to see, so until now we've only seen these systems as uh, choices of, of axioms. I mean, you say, well, you want you want these properties, then you have them, and that's the game of algebra. Um, if we try to approach it computationally, we sort of remove the weight from the choices of, of axioms and put the weight on the choices of, of maybe notation or, or, or computational support, which I guess is the more general thing to consider. 
Um, and those are those are the those are the factors that will determine what your algebras look like and what things you have access to, and so on. Um, and of course, our our particular program uh, with with a sort of foundations by uh, hypergraph rewriting and and trying to define emulations between formal systems and all these kinds of things that we've been trying to do. Um, that's just one manifestation of this phenomenon where if you choose your uh, computational support wisely, you're getting a lot of things for free. And we're getting these cor some correspondences between, for example, uh, higher order algebra, higher order hypergraphs uh, and, and, and higher algebras simply by drawing the, the right connections. I mean, we're not doing a lot of work, we're just finding the right connections and, and things work out. So, so in that sense, uh, computation, I mean, I could speak to the, to the advantages of more traditional computation to mathematics, but I feel like uh, recent history has vindicated that so much that it doesn't need any further, uh, any further encouragement. Right? I mean, you look at uh, how computation has completed mathematical programs and how it has led to these auto automated theorem improvers and, and all this trend in more f in the formalization and I'm of course of the opinion that these libraries of, of um, computational mathematical knowledge in some sense that are actionable that you, they are actually computing things you can prove things inside them instead of just listing all the possible proofs those are the future of mathematical libraries I mean in the past we had books now we have that like I think I truly think those are the future of what mathematics looks looks like right so but, but here we're trying to do something that goes a bit beyond that. We're trying to provide computational support for humans in particular. I mean, also other entities, other, you know, maybe AIs or, or some other, or interfaces between libraries, mathematical libraries and things like that. But we are trying to develop the language itself. We're trying to develop the framework itself with these things happen. Um, and, and so the, it's not so much that we use computation for that, but we use the computational framework. That, that is going to allow to do that, and that's going to enable um, uh, many discoveries and advances and things that you know, are already kind of panning out, and it's nice to see. Wow. Wow, that was a really excellent response. That might have been, that might have been the best response to a question that we've had this entire, uh, during all, during these uh, community fora. I mean, yeah. They just, they just uh, aimed at the right, in the right direction to get to get the, the, the good answer.